I heard that uh, Ukrainian side already once agreed to have peace talks and uh, yeah, our troops were given order to uh, suspend any action. But then uh, U uh, Ukrainian President Zelensky withdrew his consent to have peace talks and uh, hostilities resumed. The, the, this is uh, how much I am updated on this. And, and uh, sorry, I'm not, I do not have any special uh, latest information on that. So what you're saying is that the situation is fluid, but how concerned are you about the casualties that we're hearing um, of the effect of the conflict, the United Nations are releasing a statement a short while ago saying there's some 150,000 refugees that have crossed into neighboring countries, Poland, Hungary, Romania, Moldova. And there have also been accusations by Kiev of the Kremlin bombing uh, orphanages, kindergartens uh, in the capital, Kiev. What is your response to this? Are you concerned about the humanitarian effects of this conflict? Of course, of course, I'm uh, very much concerned. Uh, we didn't want any hostilities with Ukraine. As our president said, uh, we were left no choice, no other option. We were compelled to have this military operation and we still consider uh, Ukrainians uh, our brothers and sisters. Uh, we uh, do, though, think that uh, they are governed from outside to a very large extent, and that uh, everything that happened uh, to a large extent, uh, we both of our peoples view uh, it owe it to, to to some external force. Uh, as for shelling. Uh, uh, premeditated shelling uh, uh, of bridges and kindergartens. This is an outright lie. On the Russian side, uh, including our president, we have on many occasions uh, emphasized that uh, we, our military act only and exclusively against military infrastructure, infrastructure in Ukraine as one of the purposes of this special military operation announced by President Putin is demilitarization of Ukraine. So, uh, if uh, some civilians uh, suffered, uh, this is this is uh, a big loss for for us, uh, just as for Ukrainians themselves. Okay, and you say we'll we'll come to the issue of foreign or outside interference in just a moment, Ambassador. There was some also, there's some news that we had earlier on as well, and that is to suggest that Russia has put nuclear deterrence forces on high alert. We understand President Putin says this as a result of a statement by NATO. Do you think it will come to that, an exchange of a nuclear armor of missiles? I, I didn't hear uh what you, you, you mentioned about the Russian nuclear forces, I don't know. I cannot comment on that. Okay. So I hope it will, we will not get there because uh, if we will have a nuclear war, then there may be nothing left on, on this globe. Right. So everyone, I think that everyone realizes that. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, we'll, we'll get to the issue of whether everybody realizes that or agrees or not, Ambassador. But you say we are here as in the Ukraine and Russia because of outside interference. To whom are you referring? And has diplomacy failed? Because I seem to remember that there was a meeting of the NATO Russia Council in Brussels, I think uh, towards the end of January to discuss the situation. Well, um I think that it was dedicated, that meeting that you referred to uh, was dedicated to some other uh, subject matter. Maybe the situation in uh, <coughs> Ukraine uh, was discussed there, raised up there, but uh, certainly the main issue was something else. And uh, uh, yes, to a certain extent, diplomacy has failed as um, uh, in order to have a full picture of, of what is going on, uh, one has to 
get over just the situation in Ukraine, specifically in Ukraine, but to put it in a broader, much broader perspective, including historical perspective. Uh, I mean, in particular, the NATO expansion since 1991, uh, since the moment they have promised us not to expand any further to, to the east. And uh, uh, then um, the role that is ascribed to Ukraine in these uh, plans and uh, uh, several other elements, in particular the rise of neo-Nazism and ultra-nationalism in Ukraine, uh, the war in Donbas, the war that has been going on for eight years, uh, that uh, the regime in Kyiv uh, uh, conducted against uh, its own population, and then um, the dismantling, basically, by United States of America of the system of arms control and verification. And we do not call it disarmament anymore, because it's uh, the opposite process uh, that's going on now. Um, as you know, um, uh, Americans withdrew unilaterally from a number of arms control agreements, and so on and so forth. So, um, uh, the snapshot of the current situation in Ukraine does not give an adequate idea of what uh, the security concerns of Russia in Europe uh, is uh, or are. And uh, um, uh, we, we have to have a broader look at that. Okay, so <laughs> the issue of the commitment made for NATO not to expand seems to be so much of a contentious issue. In fact, I had a conversation with a professor, former NATO chief of staff employee, uh, denying that there was ever any commitment at that meeting, March 6, 1991. But I understand the Spiegel says that there is evidence uh, that uh, there was uh, not only uh, agreement among amongst the foreign ministers of the US, the UK, France, and Germany that was made clear to, um, or that NATO will not expand its borders past the eastern borders of Germany. This was apparently said by the US Assistant Secretary of State for Europe and Canada, Raymond Seitz, but there are those who, de who deny that. I've seen an interview where President Putin uh, says there is evidence of these documents. The Allies are saying there's no evidence of this document documents. Does this make it difficult, the fact that there was a, an agreement, whether principial or not, of NATO expansion? Though NATO does deny the fact that it's expanded to the point where it breaches Russian security. Well, um, we, we, on our side, we know uh, for sure, uh, and I personally do know for sure, that there have been guarantees that the NATO will not expand to the East. Being a young diplomat, I've read uh, minutes of several uh, meetings that took place in the uh, 1990, 1991. I worked uh, uh, in the legal department at that time, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty much sure about what I saw at that time. So if uh, evidence is... Um, uh, on our side, uh, should not, must not be taken into consideration. Then, of course, uh, it, it, is, it is difficult. And um, we have to leave it to some researchers uh, in the West to try to find some traces there, because obviously, uh, my, my, I suspect they, they, they have been cleared in order to not leave uh, you know, any traces of, of such promises. But uh, some 20 years ago, nobody con um, uh, contested the fact that there were the guarantees were given and that promises were made and uh, that there are papers. Uh, well, maybe they're just made to classified. I don't, I don't know. But uh, everything you hear uh, to the opposite uh, from on that is just an outright lie. And the reason I ask this question is about the value not only of the existence of uh, the NATO Russia Council, because if there was an agreement, a principal agreement on um, A, I'd imagine the 
respect of the sovereignty of states, including Ukraine, but including what Russia says is the endangerment of its national security. Uh, have relations broken down to such a point that Russia feels that there is no room for diplomacy because then doesn't it make a fuss of overtures now of saying, let's sit down around the table and discuss the way forward? Well, we, we tried, we did our best. We tried to uh, uh, convince our Westerner, I cannot call them partners anymore, um, uh, uh, opponents uh, not to uh, expand, uh, not to go east uh, for many years. I, I can refer you and, and the listeners uh, to the uh, intervention by President Putin on, uh, at Munich conference in uh, February 2007. Exactly 15 years ago, uh, he, he warned against the NATO ex expansion to the uh, east. And he spoke about uh, 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 the balance between the multipolar and uh, unipolar uh, world and, and uh, the, the trends that um, uh, are uh, developing in the world uh, and so on. And um, so 15 years later, uh, we have uh, NATO knocking at our door putting more and more uh, military troops and infrastructure right on our borders. Uh, from that point of view, uh, Ukraine uh, has a significant role as uh, if uh, NATO troops appeared in Ukraine, uh, they would have been very close to Moscow. And from um, the point of view of strategic defense, that was completely uh, unacceptable.